Hi everyone, my name's Jamie. I'm part of the communications team at Cornwall Council. Uh, I'm here to bring you our first ever Saturday STEM session. Now you may remember during the lockdown when children were learning at home, we set up our live STEM sessions so that we could start talking about all things to do with engineering, uh, technology and, uh, and, and maths, which is what STEM is, science, technology, engineering and maths. Well, we've started them up again and we're going to do them on a Saturday morning, every Saturday, 9.30. Now, next week's session is a great one. We're going to be joined by Dave from Spaceport Cornwall. So if you've got any questions when it comes to space, then do get them into the comments uh, below this video or you can add them to the event, which will go live on Monday next week. Now, this week we're doing some uh, explosions some experiments, uh, and we're going down to Camborne Science and International Academy, especially to their Nexus facility, where we're going to learn all about gases and how they interact and do a few kind of uh, scientific detective uh, experimentations. So please don't try this at home because things are going to blow up, trust us. Uh, so thank you very much to the team at Camborne Science and International Academy for their support with this. Uh, Lucy Gawley is going to take you through the experiment, so I hope you enjoy this video. Hello, I'm Mrs Gawley and I'm one of the science teachers here at Nexus. Today we're going to be science detectives and we're going to use experiments to find the identity of unknown liquids and gases. So for our first experiment, we're going to be finding out the unknown gases in different balloons. So here I have three balloons and each has a different type of gas in them. And I'm not sure which type of gas is in which balloon, but I do know that one contains hydrogen, one contains helium, and the other one contains carbon dioxide. Now let's be science detectives and try and find out which type of gas is in which balloon. What could we do? Well, I think the first most obvious thing to do is maybe to let go. So there we saw that two of the balloons floated up, whereas one of them sank to the floor. Now this means that those two balloons that floated have gas in them that is less dense than air, whereas the one that sank must have a gas in it that's more dense than air. So we need to do some further experiments to find out which balloon is hydrogen and which balloon is helium. Now helium is a very unreactive gas, we say it's inert, whereas hydrogen is extremely reactive and very flammable. So if I add a lit splint to each of the balloons, then we should see a difference. So were you able to work out which balloon contained which gas? The green one caused an explosion when I added the lit splint, so that one must be the explosive hydrogen, whereas the blue balloon was helium. So out of the three balloons, we've now used experiments to find out that the green balloon must have been hydrogen because it exploded. The helium must have been the blue balloon because it just popped like a regular balloon. And the red one, which was the one that sank, must have contained carbon dioxide gas being more dense than air. And for our second experiment, we're going to be using flame tests in order to identify unknown solutions. So here I have three different salts, not the type of salt that you put on your fish and chips. This one contains strontium, this one contains copper, and this salt contains potassium. Now, these will make different colours when I put each of them in the flame. So let's see what happens. So we've got the Bunsen burner set up now, and we're going to take each salt and just put it into the Bunsen and see what happens. So we turn the Bunsen onto the blue flame. And this is our first salt, strontium. And it goes a crimson colour in the flame. Now for our second salt, we've got the one that contains copper. And here you can see 
that it gives a lovely green colour in the flame. Now finally the one that contains potassium, let's see what colour it turns. Okay, so there you might be able to see that it turns a lilac colour in the flame. So now we've discovered what each colour, each of those different types of salt turn when we add it to the flame. But I've got three unknown solutions containing each of those salts. So let's find out which one is which by spraying them into the flame. So now I'm going to spray the first unknown solution of these salts into the flame. So as you saw, that went a crimson red colour, so it must have contained the strontium. Now for the next one. So that unknown solution turned a lilac colour in the flame, so that salt must have contained potassium. For our final unknown solution, Here you can see that it turns a green colour in the flame, so that solution must have contained copper. Now for our third experiment, we're going to be using indicators to find the identities of unknown liquids. So here we have four colourless liquids. I know that one is an acid, one is an alkali and one is neutral but they all look exactly the same. How am I going to find out the difference between them? I also know that one is an unknown. It could be an acid, it could be alkali, or it could be neutral. So what I use is something called universal indicator. Now this indicator indicates the identity of each of these substances. So let's find out what happens when I add this to an acid. So I just need a few drops. And you can see that the indicator has changed colour and it indicates that we have an acid, acids go red. So now let's find out what happens when I add the indicator to the alkali. Give it a bit of a mix. Now that's got a really deep blue colour. And now let's add it to our neutral substance and see what happens. So here, give it a mix. There, it's just turned green. So the indicator helps us to indicate whether a substance is acidic, alkaline, or whether it's neutral. Now let's find out what our unknown colourless liquid is. Let's add the indicator. What will it be? It's turned red, so it must be an acid. Now, if you want to be your own science detective, why not make your own indicator using red cabbage at home? So to do this, here we have the red cabbage. All that you need to do is, is cut it up. Please ask an adult at home for supervision. Obviously the other experiments that we've done today have been too dangerous for you to do at home, but this one um, with adult supervision you might be able to do and be your own science detective. So I've cut up the red cabbage and all you have to do is you could place it in a pan, I've got a beaker here, and then add to it some water. You're then going to heat the red cabbage um, in the water. You can do this on your cooker um, and add some heat to it and actually boil up the red cabbage. So once the red cabbage solution has cooled down, you're ready to filter out the solid from the liquid. So if you're at home, you can just use a sieve to do this and put it over a bowl. And I'm just gonna do it like this. And there we go. So I'm gonna capture all of the solid bits of cabbage in my sieve, leaving my red cabbage indicator. 
in this beaker here. So now you're ready to actually test your red cabbage indicator. You can use different solutions and substances around the home, things like vinegar, um, soap, even water. And in an acid, it should go this kind of pinky kind of red color. In an alkali, the indicator should go, this red cabbage indicator should go green. And in a neutral substance, it will just stay purple. Thank you for being a science detective with me today. If you'd like to watch more of our videos, please head over to our website and watch Nexus TV. So that's Lucy there from Camborne Science and International Academy at their Nexus facility. Uh, thanks very much for their support with this uh, first of our Saturday STEM sessions. We will be getting them back on again in a few weeks time. Uh, but if you do work in STEM and you want to inspire the next generation, then please do uh, drop us a line here at Cornwall Council and we will more than welcome you to, to join our Saturday STEM sessions. So next week, don't forget, we're going to take a trip into space. We're going to talk with uh, Dave from Spaceport Cornwall, where everything to do with Virgin Orbit, how the airport go is going to work when it comes to uh, vertical launches and anything to do with space. We want to hear from you. So come in, uh, drop your comments and your questions below, or you can add them to the event, which will go live on Monday. Uh, but that's next week's STEM session. This is Saturday STEM from Cornwall Council. Have a great weekend.